You're listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast, episode two. Have you ever been pushed outside your comfort zone so hard and fast that the only way you could ever consider carrying on despite that discomfort was to count on that one person that had your back no matter what? It's probably the person that nudged you in that direction in the first place. It's definitely the person you know will have your back regardless of the outcome. And that dedication, support, and unwavering belief in you holds you upright. What happens when you lose that person? Maybe it's a relationship breakdown where you suddenly find yourself single, feeling vulnerable, without support. Or maybe it's your relationship with your best friend that very gradually fades off in the distance with life just getting in the way. My guest today, singer and songwriter, former Philippine Idol contestant, and World Championships of Performing Arts medal winner, Red Tan, knows exactly what it's like to lose that constant support system, her soft place to fall, her number one fan, her husband. In 2017, Red Tan lost her husband to illness and instantly became a single mother to their son. Faced with this insurmountable loss, Red Tan had a decision to make. How did she want to be defined? She put all her focus on her why, which is helping others and making a difference. She's not afraid to take risks, put herself out there, wearing her heart on her sleeve through her song lyrics, all to help others realize how important they are. Her debut EP, Don't You Dare, dedicated to her late husband, inspires everyone to use the challenges, failures, rejections, criticisms, and even mental health setbacks as stepping stones to rise up, stay on track, and reach their goals. Are you ready to learn Red Tan's tips for building confidence, dealing with rejection, and the importance of having a why? I promise you won't want to miss this episode with this incredible inspiration. So let's dive right in and meet my friend, Red Tan. You're listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast, where we firmly believe that you and only you have the power to make the changes you seek in your life. Survivor of 10 years of child abuse, Lisa Sabanyak, will help you to empower yourself to overcome your limitations in whatever form they take to build the life you truly deserve. It's time to hear from fellow experts who know firsthand what building a successful and satisfying life because of our past experiences is like and exactly what it takes to do it. If you're ready, willing and able to get honest with yourself, roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty with the hard work that lasting change takes, you're in the right place. Here's your host, NLP practitioner, speaker, Reiki master, author, and chipaholic, Lisa Sabaniak. Today's episode is dedicated to daily greatness, offering the best planners I've ever seen or used to help you change your habits and hold yourself accountable to your goals. After offering their original planner, They've branched out to now offer the most incredible planners for parents, wellness, yoga, business, and success. I started with the business planner and was, and still am, blown away. I've simply never seen anything like this. Everyone knows that changing or making new habits takes perseverance, and that's where a lot of us go wrong. We have a great goal and even a plan to reach the goal, but we don't hold ourselves to implementing the plan for more than a few days or weeks at most. That's where this planner comes in. You see, Daily Greatness understands that the way you start your day determines how you spend your day. And of course, the way you spend your day determines your future. The intuitive flow of the Daily Greatness concept gives you a foundation and a structure to your days that support you in achieving your goals. That's right, not only are you setting goals with these planners, but you are following up on those goals, changing your disempowering habits to empowering ones, acknowledging your strengths, challenging your fears, 
and so much more. For more information about these awesome planners, go to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. Again, that's lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. So Red Tan, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. I know that you are so busy. In particular, you're gearing up for the release of your debut EP, Don't You Dare, dedicated to your Mm -hmm. late husband. Can you tell us about the whole writing and recording process for this song or this EP? Mm -hmm. So I recorded the the EP in Southampton. Actually, the, the song Don't You Dare is my lead single, and it's composed of all my sentiments in the past year put together to create a very honest track. And um, yeah, I was alone in Southampton. It's very unfamiliar to me when I wrote and recorded that song. And I was with a very amazing Luke Adams, um, who created the music to me first. And uh, I was in River Studios the whole time he was doing it to make sure that he's getting the sound that I want. But he actually surpassed all my expectations. He he made a very strong and uh, has a bit of an attitude soundtrack and which matches, which I can easily matches the writing with the lyrics. Amazing. And so, you know, with the loss of your husband and, and being a single mother, how has that changed your mindset and your approach to your work? Being a single mom, um, there is this like drive in me that I have to do twice. I have to do better now because I'm just doing everything alone. I don't have a partner with me anymore. So that's quite a challenge. But based on my song, Don't You Dare, I use those challenges as stepping stones to do more and um, to pursue my dreams. That's amazing. You know, this podcast is all about overcoming limitations and obviously losing your husband and and being now all of a sudden a single mom for the last two years. Obviously, those are some huge obstacles to face. I guess that's a defense mechanism of every woman out there who's been who's been like in my situation to prioritize their sanity and uh, yeah, strengthen their coping skills like that. Yeah. Long, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I know music is, you know, a lot of times that I've gone through my own personal struggles and and whatnot, music can be like the saving grace. Do you know what I mean? You just find that tune that you just resonate with. And whether it's like angry shouting or whether it, you know, brings you to tears every time or (laughs) what, it's just so much power in in music, right? But I can imagine being in the music industry must have been must be very very difficult in itself you must have had your fair share of rejection for example and everyone uh-huh. has been rejected in some way shape or form right true, you don't that's have to true. Be in the music industry to face that but a lot of people when they're faced with some sort of rejection would just walk away so what uh-huh. drove you all along in your music career and what continues to drive you now to believe in yourself and your talent yeah. to carry on. Rejections, they, they really don't define you or me as a person or define my talent, right? So what you do, like, for example, when I had this audition for a musical here in London, I got rejected and I asked for feedback. That's what right. I usually do. So I can do better next time. But it doesn't get into me personally or into my head, like um, telling myself I'm not good enough because I got rejected. Oh, so that means um, by, by asking for feedback, then that means you can do better next time or correct your mistakes next time. As That's long amazing. as you keep to yourself, it, you, you, you tell yourself that it doesn't define you. It doesn't, yeah. Exactly. Because I think so many people, what they do is they don't <laughs> ask those questions. They don't ask for the feedback, whatever it is, yeah. whether it's their boss, True. whether it's like in your case with an audition even a relationship yeah. that fails or a friendship that just kind of goes south, you know, when you kind of lose yeah. time and whatnot, we tend to, as humans, tend to take it personally and assume that it's about us. And if we're sure. assuming it's about us, then, then we are implying that there's something wrong with us, right? Whereas exactly. just asking the question so that you can get the answers, be like, okay, actually, yep. Yeah, there's there's things that I can improve upon, but it doesn't mean that I'm the horrible disgrace of a human that I that I would have been going on in my head. 
if I just didn't ask the question. That's amazing. So is that advice that you would give to others if, if they're trying to overcome that voice in their head that tells them that they're not good enough? If it's the voice that's coming within them, I think they should just ignore it. I know it's not easy, but they have to. They have to block them. They have to distract themselves. Like, for example, keep themselves up preoccupied um, by listening to music, doing their hobbies, cooking or doing exercise like that. Yeah, stand up to that to that voice and um, tell tell yourself that these voices have no power over me. I love that. And I love preoccupying yourself with things that you like to do. Actually, because that, I think that's the best coping skill when you yeah. preoccupy yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it also kind of reinforces because you're doing things that you like, you assume that you're kind of good at them if you're doing them. And so it kind of reinforces, well, hey, I may have not got the result over there that I had wanted originally, but I I actually have talent. I have things that I'm actually really good at. And it doesn't mean that I'm not good at that thing over there. I'm just not where I need to be with that yet. And so let's come Mm -hmm. up with a plan to figure out how to do that and get motivated by doing these other things in the meantime. True, but it's actually hard to fight um, against these voices on your head it's not like coming from other people because if it just come from other people's opinions it's easy because it's just one person's opinion but if it's coming within you it's I know it's a struggle (laughs) yeah absolutely do you ever have those thoughts when you're writing a song or you're just about to release something (laughs) yeah sometimes we do have those down moments yeah yeah and what do you think is that that kind of peace that somebody needs like yourself that that instead of saying you know what I'm not good enough I'm not going to go and release this debut EP I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk away versus oh, no you know what I yeah, am gonna I I'm am gonna good enough. try yeah. yeah I am good enough I am important I am worthy and no one can tell me that I can't be successful I love I it always tell tell that to yourself <laughs> Yeah. And I always think, I always think a couple of things when I'm in a position like this is first of all, I always think about um, what's the worst case scenario here. So if I, if I go ahead, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an artist like you are, but you know, if I, if I'm releasing this podcast and it fails, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Am I going to be absolutely humiliated and it's the end of the world as I know it? No, it's not going to be. No, exactly. Like, obviously I want it to be successful. But if it's not, I will learn and I will grow yeah. and I'll adapt because I've True. done that with so many other things in my life already. And so I know yeah. I'm capable of doing that. Sometimes people just exactly. need a reminder. And the other thing that I do is I always think about when I'm towards the end of my life and I'm reflecting back, if uh-huh. I take the safe road, if I always, every time that voice creeps up and says, no, Lisa, you're not good enough. If I was to listen to that every time and say, yeah, you know what? not gonna I'm not gonna try that I probably when I'm at the end of my life I'm gonna regret that and then it's too late True. yeah so yeah. Does, does some of that come in with you as well yeah I always I always want to take risk it's like nothing's gonna happen in my life if I don't <laughs> I'm a risk taker I love it. I love yeah. it. So let's get back to your music for a little bit here. What do you hope listeners will take away from your music? I actually I want to inspire a wider audience. Mm-hmm. I want them to t- I want to tell them that they too are strong and important. That that is amazing. And I personally love your song Don't You Dare. I was watching the the video of it actually the other day. And uh, I made mm-hmm. my, my stepsons watch it as well. And my husband is mm-hmm. like, so I nice. love this. Yeah. And I love the message that's in there. Is there a particular yeah. story? Is there a particular story that's behind it? And what made you feel the song was a good fit for your, a first release? Um, the story behind this is um, ba- it, these are based on all the challenges that I've gone through in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, the life circumstances, the mental health, the depression and anxiety. So I keep, te- I keep telling this, these challenges to actually, I tell them, like, don't you dare yeah. do this to me. Don't you dare tell me I'm not good enough. Don't, don't you dare tell me I can't be successful because I am going to you know, fight um, against these 
my own battles. Actually, these are more in my, my own battles that I'm fighting against with. So that's where I put it into writing. Like, you can't do this to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be stronger and I'm going to move forward and fulfill my goals. So I that's where love I, that. It's yeah. like a, a giant screw you to <laughs> <laughs> sure. every negative thought you've had in your head and, and anytime somebody True. has rejected you. True. And, and also haters. Uh, I don't oh, have that yeah. much yet. But. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger you become, the more they gravitate to you for some reason, isn't it? That's true. true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. So you live in London now, right? In the UK. Yes. I'm but you're here. originally from the Philippines? From Manila, yeah. So how long ago did you move here and how has moving to London impacted your career and your ability to connect with other artists or those in the industry? I learned so much here in London. The ins and outs here is totally different as compared to the music industry in the Philippines. Like it's totally, totally different. Um and I wanted to share these skills um which I developed here to my home country and encourage artists there that they too can make it worldwide and hoping to also expand the Filipino music and culture across the world. Oh, I love that. Yeah, soon maybe, yeah. That, that's fantastic. So if you weren't playing music or if that wasn't your life's goal, what would your career be, do you think? I am also a businesswoman, so maybe I'll just um, stick with my business. But I have this passion to help children, and my business is associated to that because it's a preschool. Oh, that's amazing. Business. And um, someday when I get big and rich, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have these dreams of, you know, returning back the favor to my home country by providing quality education to children. That is incredible. Yeah. Can, can people get involved with helping you with that in some way? Oh, yeah. I'm planning to um, create a foundation and some people, if they want to donate, then they can donate. But that's going to happen um, in the future. That's my long-term <laughs> goal. That's amazing. So make sure you keep me updated because what I'll do is <laughs> for the show notes for this episode, I'll update them when you are actually running this and you've got sure. the ability for donations and whatnot for people yeah. to come out and help in whatever way. And I'll and post those links in the show notes. True, you have a very nice podcast. It's uh, I like it because it's purpose driven. Like, I, I was so excited to yeah to talk to you and uh, talk to you about it. Oh, thank you so much. I, I, we're on very similar missions because <laughs> I I'm obviously also trying to help people as well and encourage people mm. to to break free from their their own limitations. Sure. And, um, you know, oftentimes those limitations are in our own head, like we've been talking about. And, yeah. you know, what, what's the difference between somebody who lets them destroy their dreams versus somebody that says, no, you know, forget it. I'm still going forward over here. True. And, True. Um, and there really shouldn't be people that are, mm -hmm. you know, putting themselves down and letting that, that stop their dreams because they've already survived so much. You know, you only have to live yeah. for, you know, a couple of decades and, you've already been through a lot of different things and you've shown yourself that you are a strong, capable person that will bounce back. We just yeah. have to get lost in the mess, don't we? And we, we sure. don't look at ourselves that way. And I think, you know, if people can feel that way from your music, that they can feel that way from listening to mm -hmm. my podcast, then, you know, all we need to do is help one person. And it just, it makes a world of difference. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. This is the perfect spot for a quick break to talk about the planner that changed my life, Daily Greatness. These planners will absolutely blow your mind. Far from a traditional planner, these planners help you overcome your weaknesses, focus on the positive, find and follow your purpose and mission in life, set exciting goals, and follow up on those goals. We all know that our outcomes and results in life are determined by our daily habits. These planners give you the foundation for success that you need to make you more likely to succeed at achieving your goals and reaching your potential. Seriously, they're that good. They have their original version, plus one for business, success, 
yoga, wellness, and parents. That's six versions to help in any situation. To learn more, go to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. Once again, that's lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash planners. This link will also be in the show notes. So what is the future of your music? Short term? Yeah. By next year, um, I'm doing an album on 2020 and I'm, yeah, going to work hard, knock down any barriers to pursue, continue this, <laughs> um, my passion in music and uh, to push myself uh, forward and uh, reach my goals. Um, my, I mean, on a shorter period than, you know, what a, a typical artist can do in five years. I hope I can do it in just a year or two. I love it. I mean, you've got the right mindset, you've got the right <laughs> attitude, right? You're driven, you've got passion. And like yeah. you said, being a single mom, sometimes, you know, uh, well, most yeah, times. Yeah, it's a right? defense mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you feel like the songwriting, if we just kind of go back to some of the things that you've gone through with, with the loss of your husband, which must have been so difficult and still is relatively fresh. I mean, it's only two years ago. uh uh-huh. Do, do you find a real healing process in in songwriting and in, and even even singing your songs? Yes, yes. Uh, music it has always been a salvation to me personally, and I would like it also to be a salvation to my fans and other people. That's why I I put everything into writing all the, all the lyrics. Um, all uh, all the thoughts in my mind and the feelings, I put it into writing and I want to share it to the world. I love it. And I love the fact that you write your own music. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you I didn't it. know that I can write until until um, the passing. After the passing, I, I wrote everything down and I realized, oh, yeah, I have this talent in writing. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> so a beautiful gift that came out of such a tragedy. I know. I know. I, I was just a singer and, and I never thought, I, re, I never really thought I could write. <laughs> that is incredible. So you've been in this industry for quite some time, haven't you? So you've been uh-huh. studying and performing music since you were 16. You've gone on, yep. on and, and won two medals at the World Championships of Performing Arts. How do you think that's helped you grow as an artist and, and help you with those limiting thoughts that you you know, have had pop up from time to time and create the person you are now? Uh, actually, it was my husband to push me to join the World Championships. I, was, I came from a five or six year hiatus in singing because I focused on being a mom since we got married. And, and then two months before the passing, he pushed me to audition. He pushed me back on stage. And I was like, what are you, what are you trying to do to me? I, I haven't sang for a long time and then you're gonna push me to to join in a competition right away I was like can I just do gigs first and then he said no I know you can do it and then so he downloaded my music he drove me to the auditions and um, for me that time okay fine nothing to lose and it's okay if I get rejected so I still I still did it, and then after that, I got accepted as a one of the representatives of the Philippines. And then, two months after the audition, he passed away. And then I still have to pursue the competition in LA because um, that's what he wanted for me. And it's really, really a tough situation for me because my number one fan, the one who pushed me to go back on stage, isn't there on my competition. And that's I think that's what drove me like okay, this is for you. I'm doing this for you. And um, I have to, I have to make it good. So after winning the two medals there, I realized, hey, I can do it internationally. I can do it again. I can be back on stage again. So that's where, where I started going to London, exploring these, um, you know, auditions and musicals and um, other auditions like in Universal Studios. Also, in Open Mic UK, I joined the Open Mic, and the rest is history. From Open Mic, that's where I, I met mentors from Sony, and then they, they told me to, to do the recording. They, they told me that, oh, you can actually do a recording. So, so there, if I didn't join 
the world championships of performing arts in LA, this will not be happening to me. Wow. And you were pushed by by your loving, supportive I husband, know, which I, I think that makes it so, it, it's, it really brings up an important point. I think sometimes it is easier to jump to something that is scary when you know that you've got a safe place to fall, right? When you yeah. know that you've got the loving arms of somebody who loves you no matter what. True. And, you know, and, and that worked for you to push you, but then losing him as devastating as that must have been to go on and win mm -hmm. the competitions then became that reinforcement that you needed to drive you exactly. forward yeah. in the absence of having that soft place to fall with, yeah. with him wow that is amazing what an incredible story so what's left on your bucket list both personally and professionally I still want to do more songs I I want to fulfill like uh, maybe five more songs before the end of this year so right. I could complete um, my album by 2020 and I want to do a lot of live shows so planning to talk to bookers here in London because I think I am ready to do the live shows that's awesome that's, that's so, it for now <laughs> so our um, so our listeners might be able to go out and get some tickets to see some of your shows in the very near future then I hope so <laughs> yes yes I feel it for you that's definitely in your in your I mean I was watching your video on YouTube and it had something like 81,000 views or something right and that didn't oh. that release in August I yeah cuz I do YouTube ads. <laughs> so it's yeah, I don't know. I don't know where these 80,000 come from. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Don't don't even but question. It's nice, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you did touch on this a, a little bit with um what you want listeners to take away from your music. But what message or legacy would you like your music to leave behind many years from now? Um, for my listeners, um, I want them to be, a, uh, I want them to be a strong person. Tell themselves to not give up, work hard, and always follow their dreams. Cause, and it's just normal to hit barriers along the way, but you just need to keep pushing yourself, keep learning, and go outside your comfort zone, as it will help you grow and uh, build your conf confidence. If you fail, it's it's okay, it's fine. Cause charge it to your experience and. Uh, you gain some learning from it. Um, you, you really got nothing to lose. That's brilliant. It's just, like, it's just like shifting the way that you look at it, isn't it? Like I always True. say, there's no such thing as failure. It's only redirection. Because yeah. I really do believe that, yes, you can absolutely be upset and mourn the loss of something not going the way that you had hoped that it would go. I mean, you know, I'm not saying True. at all that we shouldn't have any investment in, in things, but when something doesn't pan out the way that we had originally planned, you know, allow mm -hmm. yourself that mourning period, allow yourself to be disappointed and, and you know, have those feelings. That's okay. That That's normal sure. and healthy. But then pick yourself back up, whether it's a few hours or a few days or a few weeks later and yeah. look, start forcing yourself to mm -hmm. look at what the opportunity is here, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. If you go out, like you say, going out and auditioning for something and you getting rejected, okay, that is obviously very painful. And of course, you should take the time to actually feel that mm -hmm. rejection. But by asking mm -hmm. them, you know, where could I improve? How, you might find out that, mm -hmm. you know, you weren't tall enough for, for them and what they were looking for in that performer. You're like, well, okay, sure. there's nothing I could do about that. That's not actually a reflection of me. It's nothing I can work towards. So clearly this role that I was going after is not the best role for me. So let me start looking sure. for other roles. Yeah, right? exactly. Maybe it doesn't fit you. Um, yeah. The role doesn't fit you. Yeah. Like how many times can you say that in your personal experience, Red, when you think yeah. about something that didn't work out the way that you had planned and now you look back on it maybe five years later and you think, well, thank goodness it didn't work out that way because I never would have done <laughs> things over here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not That's just with true. you and your music industry. I mean, you know, I'm talking about your personal life as, as well, right? Everybody mm -hmm. can relate to that. We all have those types of things. And I think that that's really important. What you said there is, 
really kind of shifting it to look at, yeah. okay, you know, what else could I do that's different or better? Or what can I look for? Where's the opportunity in this? It's all yes. about how you look at it. Yeah, the silver lining on things. You, you just got to trust that whatever happens to you, good or bad, is a contributory to you as a person. Exactly. It's either, yeah. Exactly. So now how old is your son? He's eight and he's very smart. <laughs> oh my gosh, eight years old. This must be amazing for him to see you going out and burying your soul in these songs and getting so into the songwriting that you didn't do before and finding this yeah. passion of yours. That must be, without realizing it, you must be inspiring him in ways that you could never, True. never plan Actually, on. He is very, very resilient as well. And um, he's very supportive of my music. You know, a typical son would tell you, like, mommy, I miss, because he's now in the Philippines, okay? He will, he will, I mean, a normal child will usually tell their moms, like, mom, I miss you, come back home. But no, not him. He always tells me, mom, what are you doing? Are you writing songs? Where are you? Um, you, you just keep doing what you're doing, okay? Um, is your song on Spotify already? You can have a listen. You oh. see, like that. So he never gave me a hard time. and Yeah. That's amazing. And, <laughs> and we must... always communicate. Oh, that is fantastic. And that must be a real driving force for you. Everybody's yeah. got to have their why, I think, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I mean, mm -hmm. you're, the more whys you can have, the more likely you are to stay on target with, with what it is you're trying to do. So your why being able to, you know, show your son what it's like to stick with something and be successful. You don't, True. success doesn't have to be millions of pounds in the bank account and have, you know, <laughs> millions and millions of fans to him. You're uh -huh. successful right now because you're doing what you love. You're doing what yeah. you want to do and nothing is going to stop you. Yeah, and um, as simple as having um, a couple songs on Spotify, it makes him feel really proud. And he tells all his friends and teachers and whoever he talks to, like, you know what? My mom has two songs on Spotify. That's so awesome. So cute. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I could totally relate to that. That's so cool. Except my, my stepsons are at the age where they're like, they pretend like they don't think it's cool, like I'm embarrassing them. But then I can like oh. overhear them, like I can overhear them telling their mates, "Oh yeah, she's all pretty much famous." <laughs> so funny. That's so, yeah, so cute. Like, yeah, yeah, how old are they? They're Thirteen and ten. Mm. <laughs> so they're great ages. So the yeah. thir the thirteen year old in particular will be like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you've got a podcast." And then you can yeah. see it's like, "Is is it on iTunes?" <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. And kids nowadays are very, very smart. Yes, absolutely. Uh, they have so much information at their fingertips, mm, don't they? Yeah. Oh my goodness. So mm. your one of your whys is obviously your son, and and one of your other whys is to help people on, along their journey. Of of course, do you have any other yeah. whys that keep you on track? I want to write more meaningful, empowering songs to um, be an inspiration to other people. I know it sounds cliche, but or corny, but it's really, really my why, my purpose. I love it because you know, again, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with getting famous and getting rich because of that fame and whatnot. But to be able to get rich and famous because you're helping other people, yeah, uh, yeah, oh, that is just amazing. And if you're Helping other people by doing something that you love and genuinely, you know, warms your heart and makes you feel yes. really proud of yourself. Like, yeah, it's more on, gratifying. That's, yeah. that's the best of both worlds, isn't it? True, true. It's so, more f fulfilling. Yeah. If, if you you are uh, you, you stick on your, your on your purpose and your your focus on it. Absolutely. So, oh, I think that that is so wonderful, and I think people just <laughs> hearing you talk today and, and your inspiration behind your music and you know where they where you want to get in in the future and and whatnot and with your your hopes for the school in the philippines i mean ah oh, mm -hmm. it's just it's just amazingly heartwarming i, I just wish you the best for for everything thank you so thank what you. is next for red tan i think that's uh, the album is for now for 2020 and live shows <laughs> so that's five five new songs that you want to record but for 2020 then 
Yes, yes. Yes, and get I have uh, currently I have eight songs already, and three is is on Spotify and on stores already, and then there's one coming up on September twenty, which is entitled "Don't Let Go." And then after that, I have two more songs coming up this this year, which was uh, recorded already. And then I am doing five more this month. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are a busy woman. <laughs> that is. So I wonderful. hope I could complete it because it's yes. really, you know sometimes you get blockages when yes. when it comes to writing. So I hope I can do five more songs in this. Well, and, you know, I am a really firm believer that everything happens for a reason and it's excellent to have yeah. a plan to set goals sure. and then do what you can to implement those goals. But mm-hmm. sometimes when life gets in the way or different things happen that you can't, you literally have to put that on hold in order to take care of this over here. That's I true. think there's purpose to that, right? That's true. And sometimes you just need to let go yes you just um like don't put too much pressure on yourself you just need to let go because sometimes you'll just walk up one day and then you will get all these ideas on your (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah and I can imagine with you writing your own songs like you obviously Mm -hmm. need to be inspired you have to have something to write about so it's one thing to say yeah I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna you know write out five songs Mm -hmm. today but if you don't have the, the life experience for that particular thing yet, True. then it's just going to be words on a page, isn't it? That you're mm-hmm. trying to put emotion mm-hmm. behind that's not really there. So yeah. rather, when you, when you find that inspiring moment, then yeah. that's the time to write it. So True. I have no doubt if you, if you do spill in to the, the wee months of 2020, it will not be far into that year before you are done. <laughs> are driven yeah yeah it's like uh, waiting for your creative cheeses to get ripened before you squeeze it yes exactly exactly and I love your your point about you releasing control because I think that is a huge part of a lot of the anxiety that people focus on Mm -hmm, and are mm -hmm. are struck down with right is um is because we're, we're trying so hard to control everything in our lives and the only thing we have control over is ourselves. So yeah. you've got to release the things you don't have control over. You can't control other people's actions and words. And, you know, yeah. you might write all of those songs, but then you can't mm-hmm. get it together to actually get into the studio to record them. And that's completely out of your hands, right? It, it has uh-huh. to be studio's availability and whatnot. Uh-huh. You just, well, that's nothing true. you can do about it, right? True, so, true. Yeah. yeah. And I always tell I always tell these people be careful what you say me. I'm gonna put it into writing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you accountable. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So I'm gonna put in the show notes, I'm gonna put all the, the links that I have um for you. Yep. But if uh-huh. you keep me posted on all of the stuff that you've got going on, so when you've got your no, new songs coming out, when you've done your album, when you're starting to, to do your live gigs and all of that, just uh-huh. send me over all of that stuff. We'll have a quick chat and I will update the show notes so everybody can know oh, exactly where you. to go to get tickets and do you know that your latest song is out and oh, all of that. so nice. Yeah. Well, hey, we're in it together, girl. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Instagram? Heck yes, I've got Instagram. <laughs> I love my Insta. <laughs> I, I've already started following you on everything. Um, oh, did you? Sorry. No, that's <laughs> Sorry okay. that. If it's anything like mine, things that just get lost in the shuffle, in, especially on, uh-huh. on social media. Oh, my Lord. I cannot keep up with the Facebook um, <laughs> come in. It's like, Oh no. So there's probably some of my dear, dear family and friends that are sitting there. Why won't she accept my friend request? But literally oh. have like a couple of hundred sitting there and I, <laughs> I just don't have time to go through them. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But Oh, I saw you on Instagram now. <laughs> oh, excellent. Follow yeah. back. <laughs> ah, amazing. So okay. I will, um, I will post out all kinds of lovely goodness to help, um, to help inspire people with this episode, and I will tag you and everything so you can send it out to your following, and everybody. Thank you. It's so nice of you, and it's really nice talking to you. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for being on, Red. Thank you. Thank you also. <laughs> Are you ready to make some serious changes by living your life like you mean it? 
I've got just the thing for you. I've created a free 30-day challenge to help you transform your mindset and your emotional well-being. For 30 days, you'll receive a daily email packed with goodness, including a new mindset exercise for you to tackle, as well as fun things like meditations. All you need to do is to commit to this challenge by registering and then opening the emails each and every day and completing your challenges. Simple, right? If you said yes, then you're ready and you know that you deserve this. You can register for free by going to lifelikeyoumeanit.com slash challenge. You can also find this link in the show notes. I am so pumped after that episode. We talked about so many things that are near and dear to my heart. Mindset, confidence, mantras, comfort zones, and new opportunities. Whoever would have thought that you could find your strength, a new skill like songwriting, and new opportunities after such a life-changing loss. That's exactly what Red Tan did. And why? She has a deep desire to help others break through their mental barriers and find their strength. What is your why? What drives you forward? If you can't answer this right this second, that's okay. But that's also a really good indication that you may be struggling to find success. Whatever success looks like for you, if you don't have clearly defined whys at the forefront of your mind, you're more likely to give up when things get tough. You'll feel like you failed. It's uncomfortable. It feels like you'll never get there. So you pack up and give up. But the more whys you have, and the more impactful they are, the more likely they are to drive you forward. And even when things don't pan out, you are more likely to look at this as a redirection and seek out the opportunities that are waiting for you. In essence, failure not only isn't an option, it just doesn't exist. Find your why and watch your determination to reach your goals soar. Thanks for listening to the Life Like You Mean It podcast. Head on over to the show notes for this episode and all past episodes at www.lifelikeyoumeanit.com forward slash blog. If you love the show, leave a rating and review. Share that love by spreading the word. Post a link to your social media. Share it with your friends and follow or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast hosting site. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, remember to live your life on purpose by living life like you mean it.